Welcome to Red V TV. It is Challenge Cup Castleford preview weekend. Um, it's going to be maybe a slightly shorter version than normal for this preview episode. I know we always say that, but we promised last week not to mention the Thursday night game ever again. So we're not going to, are we, Kev? What okay. game? Exactly. Um, so this weekend then, Castleford in the Cup. Just like last year, live on national television, Saturday afternoon. Last year we got completely and utterly demolished, embarrassed, it has to be said. Is it going to be revenge or is it going to be a repeat? Uh, quite the confident for it. Um, the return of Ben Barber is good for us. The return of Roby in the game that should not be mentioned for 60 minutes last week is good for us. Did he get 60 minutes last week against? <laughs> and the, the fact that they're missing Luke Gale uh, is a big miss for them. Yet they've got players who will obviously step up and step into his, his shoes and and prove that they should be in ahead of him as well. That's that's the the carrot kind of for them to go on and, and prove that they should be the half back for the club and that they are better than Luke Gale. So I think it'll be a good game but quietly confident. Obviously last year I think it was fifty odd points to I think sixteen we got beat by um and let's be honest we got absolutely embarrassed in that game. We had a a decision that went against us quite early on. Um I think we watched Rob Hicks on the television coverage described the ball getting put down and it being a try and then for some reason give a no try so a year on still unsure but yeah but we were we were we were made but that, that was the first time I'd listened to your commentary and the last and the last um, usually I'm at the game so so you can forgive me for that but you kind of they scored the same try four times against us and it wasn't and just me. No, it was it, we, we literally really like... just kept on getting torn apart. Um, so obviously our defence is better, and hopefully <coughs> we can take that into into the weekend game. Um, and hopefully you and Chris on Wish FM won't be right. get, getting bored of describing the same try over and over again. Well, I'm... and if you do, it's for us. And I'm not entirely sure if you go back on the videos from Castleford last year. I'm not sure whether it was the cup game or the league game where we got beat, where the Seagull was shitting on me head. <laughs> well, <laughs> every cloud. <laughs> every cloud. <laughs> they say muck for luck. Well, it's not when it happens after the game. <laughs> um, Zach Ardaker, massive, massive loss for Castleford this year. Does it show the importance, obviously combined with us having Ben Barber, the importance of having a world-class fullback in years gone by? It might have been your half-backs you look to. Now, is the full-back position the, the key position in a, in, a, in a team? It's definitely one of them. You look now and you think that one, six, seven and nine are all half-backs, or at least one and nine are of sorts, um, where they can come and, to borrow a phrase from Sky, chime in um, in the line it, and, and be kind of a little bit more... I don't know, open with the play. Does, that, not does that come down to the way teams defend? Our teams, you hear about teams defending by number on either side. And obviously if you've got a really quick fullback, yeah. you can switch from one side of the pitch to the other. It gives you that little bit of an overlap. I don't think it necessarily needs to be someone who's really quick. Not, not speed-wise. I think they need to be quick mentally. So literally, if they see that you're lining up four on four on the blind side they might try and get into that line on that side, make it five on four, make their defence have to scramble across, but try and find a, a, a spare pair of hands on that side. And I think there's probably a lot of truth from what you say there. Obviously, not only does it have somebody who does that, it's somebody who can manage the game well and spot those opportunities. And obviously, when you've got Danny Richardson, who's obviously a work in progress, but is able to organise a little bit more, and you've got a James Roby on the field yeah. as well. It gives you that James Roby's seen probably every defensive setup over the years and, and knows exactly where the ball should be going. Well, that's it. I mean, you look at our usual, I'll say, one, six, seven, and nine. You've got at nine, James Roby, been there, seen it, done it, won Still it. the best in Super League. Yeah. You've got a young work in progress at seven. You've got a six who is finding his way back in to being a half back. But has played there and could fall into fullback. And then we've got probably the undoubted star of the league at fullback. And we're, we're very, very lucky to have him. Just think if it had gone to Warrington. Just think if it had gone to Warrington. We'd, I don't think that. They still wouldn't win it. 
<laughs> no, that's a job. No, no, they won't. They won't because they're, go, they're going well at the moment. But that's it. That that combined is is a really good place for us to be. I'd say we're we're not. They're not all old heads who could all retire at once. Yeah, there might be one or two that might either move on because it, whether it's the career doesn't quite pan out over the next couple of years. How it does? James Roby isn't getting younger. Um, ben Barber might go back home. He might end up staying. We don't know yet. Let's hope that some of this weather that we've got today reminds him of home. Yeah, it reminds him of home, and he, he likes it over here and likes the pressure off him. But I think we're in a really, really good situation with them four. Um, Castleford, oh, we just mentioned about the missing Zach Hardy. Greg Eden, another big loss for them. Can you pinpoint? Has much gone wrong with them? Because you look where they are on the table, but. They've got a couple of games in hand. If they win those games in hand, that I think that it'll put them third in the table. So the table probably could be said does lie at this moment in time. I always say I'd rather have points on the board than games in hand. Because you can lose them games in hand. If you've got to try and fit them in and play it Friday, Wednesday, Sunday, and that's how you fit one of the games in, you're gonna be struggling when it comes to kind of the latter end of the season. Going out to the cup could be a blessing in disguise, as long as they can rearrange a couple of games round it. Um, but no, I wouldn't say much has gone wrong for. I think people not at, not have found them out, but kind of can play against them a little bit. Yeah, more. and I think I think they're just playing a slightly different game than last year. Where last year they were just blowing teams away I, points wise, a bit like we've done at times this season. Now it tends to be a bit more of a grind. For I'd, them, I'd, pro- I'd probably picking the points up. Yeah, I'd probably go back to your Zach Hardacre point. When Ben Barber leaves us, we'll go through. Even though we could probably slot Lomax back to one, or we might have a young lad coming in, or we we go out and get someone to play at fullback. It's it's going to be a big miss. You were alluding to fullback being another halfback on the pitch. That's what Zach Hardacre was, and you can't underestimate how big. Ben Roberts dropping back there, and I think Jake Truman's played the last couple there at, at fullback, who's a halfback, I think, by trade. Um, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but th- they're obviously trying to go down that that route again, and and they'll get it right. And I'd, listen, I think Castle still be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. I've absolutely no doubts about that because they're I a think, good team and well coached. I think at this moment in time, I think Saints Wigan will be in the top four. I think Cass will be. I think the other places are shootout between Leeds, Warrington and Hull. I think it'll be Warrington. I'm not convinced. Warrington have had too many hard games, but we'll probably allude to that in a later yeah. episode. Um, so that's the the men's cup game covered. Uh, and then we get to double it up this weekend with another fantastic game as the, the women's team take on Wigan yeah. uh, over at Robin Park. One o'clock kickoff on... Sunday, um, as we write this, there's no teams been or squads announced just yet, but can't imagine too much changing. No, no. Um, I was speaking to Pip Birchall's dad after this Salford game, and she was hoping to be back in and around the squad for this game. So hopefully, she's on the road to recovery. And if this game is a little bit early for her, she'll be involved in the coming weeks. They've started off really well. Let's hope they can go over and uh, stick one, stick one to the pie eaters. Yeah, and obviously, is it will it be four from four? And yeah, bit of bit of daylight at the top of the table. Wigan have obviously, I think they've lost one and drawn one. Is it? All oh, right, I've the situation is. So we may correct it on that, but yeah, it helps solidify the position in the top two alongside Leeds. The um, men's team, um, big decision to be made this weekend. Uh, probably the only change I would imagine will be made will be Ben Barber coming straight back in, but. People were talking about Adam Swift or Regan Grace on the wing. Um, big call for him to make. Personally, I can't see a change being made this weekend, but what do you think on it? I'm not sure it's Holbrook's style just to take someone out and kind of just, just for the sake of it. Yeah, people will argue that Grace didn't look that, that hot in defence um, on Thursday. I can, I can see him leaving him in there. I honestly can. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be... Too fussed if he did did make the change and gave Swift a run out while it's the cup, um, but I don't I don't think you give anybody a run out in this game. It's it's that much of an important game for our season. You 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 go with whatever you think is the best team. Yeah, possible. but but when I say run out, 
it's an experienced winger yeah. coming in for so it's not a so useful. Different. It's not it's not turning around and saying we're going to throw yeah, of course, but Jack Ashworth in for a full game, or James Bentley in for a full game, or one of the lads like Kev Browning from the academy. I'm saying it's someone who is literally like who is an established first team squad member. I think the precedent was set earlier a couple, earlier in the season with Adams uh, Johnny Lomax didn't have the best of games. And people were thinking, will he bring fast? Will he change around? And he didn't. He no. stuck with. He, he lets them play through it. You, 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 you have to play through a poor performance. Um, and wasn't Regan that bad last week? Listen, he dropped a couple of high balls, but for me, essentially over the season, he's been pretty solid under them. Um, what what he, where he was lacking might have been in attack, but he went and scored two tries in the game we won't talk about last week. So I I, I think he'll probably stick with Grace this week and. Maybe try and maybe freshen things up next week if he wants to rotate a little bit, but this week, big game. Does he rotate though? Does no and that's that's not a question as in does he go and do it? Does Holbrook rotate? To date, no. But will we continue with this policy over thirty games? Especially seeing what happened with Cass last year when they didn't really change things around and it caught up with them at the end. Especially I, if we have more cup games to come as well. Yeah. Well, I agree, but it's it's whether it's in Holbrook's style to do. Right, uh, I think we'll leave it there, won't we? Uh, we will see you on Saturday after Castleford, and hopefully we will be celebrating without seagull shit on our heads. But I bet you'd like to see that again, wouldn't you? Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and we'll see you Saturday on Red V TV.